Welcome to Earth Star Talk, episode 17, Your Spirit Connection. Today we have two questions, and I think they go hand in hand. One is about cataclysmic events, and one is about positive advice for the future. Well, to the first one, cataclysmic events, I can say that we all have, we are always had cataclysmic events on this planet Earth as this is part of our three-dimensional existence, polarity, good and bad things are happening to the extreme. Now this earth plane has been uh, populated by several civilizations. We all have heard about Atlantis and Lemuria. Where are they now? They have partially disappeared because of earth shifts and changes. Or we find mammoths which were insta-frozen because a most likely comet went through our uh, ozone layer and punctuated the ozone layer and flash froze everything because what on earth could flash froze or uh, insta froze anything like as big as mammals. We find them in Siberia still chewing cod uh, and are in its tribe while they were frozen. So most likely the asteroid or something like that punctured what we have now as ozone hole and brought with it a huge flash of, um, you know, icy cold um, substance from the ethers or from the cosmos, because, you know, that would do it. We also found in the Middle East some glassy surface with skeleton underneath, which could have only been produced by an atomic explosion of ginormous uh, outmaths. Uh, so ginormous happening. Uh, sorry, sometimes my German comes in the way of me speaking English. Mm, so yes, there have been many civilizations here and there's always been cataclysmic events. Like there are always volcano eruptions, there are always um, earth shifts and changes, there always have been new viruses and new diseasements. I'm sure that there are some diseasements, um, viral or microbial frozen in the Antarctica, which when it thaws might come into our atmosphere and plague us, we will see. Um, but yes, there will always be wars and there's always a cycle of such things. But how do we deal with those? When we understand that we incarnated in a time where we wanted to be, to have certain experience and like an actor in the theater play of life, signing up for a dramatic act Maybe then we can take the bitterness out of the happenings which might come up. Because yes, there are wars coming in. I've seen certain visions where, for example, people with three different kind of uniforms were marching through Sedona. When exactly that's going to happen, I'm not sure. But I was shown weapons, which were unusual. I was shown soulless soldiers, where there was not really a soul in the humanoid form, almost like animated like computers, but in grown, you know, body construct of the flesh and bone construct, as I said. So I, I've seen a lot of things which I do not know exactly when they come to pass. And it is good that we are not always knowing what is coming to pass because otherwise we would not live in the now. Because in this now is the power of living. We have no control over what exactly is going to happen in the future. We can always be preparing ourselves to have food, shelter, security, right? The, the base foundations. And yes, we cannot prevent dying at some point in time which is just, just the release of this body as life is eternal and our soul moves on to higher grounds again. So nothing really to be scared of. 
when we ask uh, about cataclysmic events, we also talk about fears. I remember several lifetimes where I died horrific deaths, some through torture, some through volcanic eruptions, some being, um, some through meanness of other people being encased in a tomb alive, some burned at stake in France. I mean, I remember many of these things, sometimes drowning in a boat accident, many, many different things. And all were for me and my soul, dramatic and catastrophic and cataclysmic. Were there catastrophic and cataclysmic for all of humankind? No. So when you're asking here about cataclysmic event, you're probably talking about cataclysmic event which happened to all of us. Well, one of them was prophesied to create three days of absolute darkness and the earth's pole would be shifting and jumping. That means there would be no rotation for a while as the poles were shifting and then would re be restarted. That was in my vision very intense and it was affecting everybody. However, we have unseen helpers. That means not all of these prophesized events have to happen. We have different timelines. So if we normally would go this way, but then there is intervention from whatever source, we all of a sudden going in a different way. So the prediction of cataclysmic scenarios are a little bit tricky and iffy. Can a pole jump happen? Absolutely, because we have already some movements of the earth magnetic field or pole, the north pole shift, south pole shift happening right now. When you ask a pilot, they have to recalibrate their earth magnetic north regularly. What else can happen? Flooding. Yes, flooding can happen because we have, we are going through a warming cycle naturally on this planet. And in this warming cycle that what is now frozen water, ice can be melting and of course rising the ocean levels and it's happening already. And then when one big ice plateau is loosened from the North Pole or South Pole, yes, it can create a cataclysmic event for some coastal regions. Um, there is one lady, she designed the IM maps. If you look up IM America maps, you will see a prophesized rising of water levels and also the creation of golden cities. That means survival cities where people learn to live together in a different form of betterment together with nature to be able to survive. I find this when I came to America first in 1999, very interesting to see these maps because they were correlating with some visions I saw. Even those visions, do they happen very soon? Not necessary. Do they come overnight? Could be, could not be. Our reality has something to do with mass consciousness and mass awareness. Every thought creates form. Yes, there is some destined event of learning, and then there are free will scenarios which also influence our lifeline or timeline. I chose this background today because it shows kind of like a matrix scenario. And all of these rims here, these cycles, could be a positive timeline of our reality, all going out from the beginning of source and going in many different 
directions. So um, depending on what timeline you are connected to or chose to be connected to, you might be at the epicenter of a cataclysmic event. For example, these people who went to visit this volcano who exploded right underneath them and were almost evaporated or had then severe burns. For them, it was an absolute cataclysmic event at that moment. And yeah, we can see that volcanoes which have been dormant now getting active again, for example, in Spain. And there might more coming down the line. Should we just look out for these cataclysmic events? No. Can we prepare for them in a way? Yes. I would recommend for you to understand that your divine guidance lets you exactly be where you're meant to be at the moment in time. And again, not everybody is supposed to survive this three-dimensional existence because some of the, our souls just want to dip in briefly, see how it is and how it feels to be in 3D, but don't want to live 100 years like in the olden times. So that is how the soul decides. Do I want to incarnate in Abraham's times where the human body lived that long or not? It's all more or less up to your and to your higher divine design. And therefore, I would recommend for you to apply the mantra, the divine in me leads me to the right things at the right time. I can relax because if you're focusing on the next and the next and the next cataclysmic event, then your life is full of angst and you cannot relax into existence anymore. You cannot go with the flow. You cannot go with just the, the wisdom of the universal flow, which like flows through you and you are with it in a natural way. You would try to. Uh, decide for something or so, I want to explore this, and then decide, oh my God, this is way too heavy duty. I want to, you know, pedal out of here. I don't want to be in there. That is a possibility to go against that what we decided at one time by something like recording where we talk to our subconscious and higher self and say, look, we have had these dramatic experience. We do not want more and more and more of this. We are checking out of this rondel of experience we want to have and go into another past. That is possible. So that is possible. In any cataclysmic event, there are possibilities of survival. And in my book, I believe there are UFOs which could pick us up or that we are in rural areas where certain things are not happening. This species, humans, have been surviving for millennia in many different ways. The Bible talks about floods. And yeah, there were some people which were safe. So why even think about the next cataclysmic wind if you have an inner guidance system which can bring you to the right moment in time? I tell you a story of a young lady who knew that she was dying in a young age. Her mother had sent her to me for a reading and she sat down and said, and am I going to die in a red car in the curve? And I heard very loudly, yes. Of course, I didn't want to say, yes, you're going to die really, really soon. So I said to her, live your life to the fullest in any given moment in time. And don't go by fear. And she said, oh, I'm not, not afraid. Um, I saw this in one of my dreams. I was just wondering whether it was a dream or it's going to come true. And I said again, yes, it can be likely coming true. But again, live your life to the fullest. And that's what she did. And she was adored and admired by all her classmates. And it happened exactly as she had seen and foreseen in her life. And there are other scenarios I want uh, to add from another client of mine, she had a so-called dream where she 
um, was close to a volcanic eruption and uh, she saw a gentleman close by her and took her in the arm unrelated to her and said it will be over soon and turned her away from the volcanic eruption it got very hot to said and then i was already out of my body so this fear what we have with the cataclysmic winds that we are suffering long doesn't always have to be be that way in her case it was just a split setting of heat and she was already out of her physical form Oftentimes, I experience it when people are dying seemingly slowly, they're part of them already on higher spheres, and other parts are still enacting a drama scenario in a body. I will never forget the analogy one of my teachers gave, where a son was going to the deathbed of his mother, and uh, he was asking the guru the teacher to you know reach her in the inner world in the inner realm and tell her how much her son loved her and missed her and that he you know wished her well on her journey and the guru said then well i reached her and she said rich son <laughs> there were so many from so many lifetimes so um we have a multitude, vastness of experience and existences. And this is just like a blink of an eye, a tiny existence, a tiny lifetime in the myriad of many lifetimes. That's why I chose this background. There's so much going on and so much going on in our souls. So many facets and so many aspects. Can we protect ourselves? against all the cataclysmic events which are possibly happening from flooding to firestorm to earth shifts where the earth might ripple to hostile takeovers from other countries to war to dying no we can't but what we can do is live in peace in the moment and enjoying the moment to the fullest, being with friends, being with family, not holding a grudge, not judging the world, just looking to the positive um, and standing our ground against dark forces and saying, you shall not pass and you shall not come close to me then. You know, standing up for what you believe is right. Even that is something we can do in the moment when something is delivered to us, which we are not okay with, that we can stand up and say, not with me. Because ultimately, we have the freedom to say yes to something and we have the freedom to say no to something. Can we say no to a cataclysmic event if it is preordained in our timeline? No, we cannot. Because we chose to be here while this cataclysmic event would happen. But the attitude towards it, we can definitely decide how we see it. And sometimes it's better not to see it coming so that we can enjoy until the moment it's happening. Full force of joy, full force being in your existence in the now, full force living. Because that's what you're here, living in polarity. And that I would say with the positive advice for the future, I would say do not judge. Do not judge everything in a day. Do not judge yourself. Do not judge other people. And start with loving yourself. Loving with yourself in this three-dimensional body with positive and negative traits is an art. And when you have mastered the art to accepting yourself as your positive and negative traits, then nothing can easily button push you, but it will go right through you like, and not like a official in your system it can all waft through you as if you would be transparent and translucent because you know here i am in polarity here i have positive and negative traits 
And up there, I am in oneness and in higher realms and beautiful existences. But that addresses us to why we came here in the first place. Some of us came for a certain mission to make a certain statement in this matrix of reality to say, I am this. I'm a politician. I'm a healer. I'm a social worker. I'm a whatever bartender. I am a whatever job you might decide to do or identifying yourself in a relation to something. I am a father, I'm a mother, I'm a son, I'm a daughter. Or defining yourself now non-binary. I'm we, I'm it, I'm they. Or whatever it is what you came here to do. Whatever your mission is to bring a new understanding into this reality. Everything is done with purpose. But on the other end, nothing falls out of God's source's creation. As you are part of this creation, the key is to understand that you are conscious co-creator and that every single thought creates a form. And in that regard, I have to say that we should be very mindful of what we are thinking. For example, a lot of people watch a lot of gruesome movies. Ah, the dark is a challenge. And sometimes we need to watch a horror movie to overcome our fear of the dark, to understand this is just a movie. This is just a theater play. This is just an artificial reality. And in the same way, we can then go and apply the same understanding to our life. This is just a theater play. This is just like a movie. Only that we are the actors in it. And we have assigned ourselves a certain role to play or were assigned. Sometimes if it's a karmic event, you chose to do one thing, you have to do the other thing and the balance of things. But ultimately you chose. You're not the victim of the choosing. And I believe that um, there are some books like about written about soul and Neil Donald Walsh described it very nicely in his book, Conversation with God, that God gave us the free will to explore our wishes and that out of his kindness, he let us do so out of our, our out of his or her or its or sources kindness, we are allowed to have these explorations and experiences. And when we have been everything, rich, poor, male, female, love, non-loved, love incarnate, hate incarnate, whatever it is, what we chose to explore, then we have the urge to go back home. Then we have the urge to say, been there, done that, nothing new in existence. I want to go back to source. And that's when we feel the urge to meditate and the urge to go home very strongly so. And then we go back to oneness, out of polarity with our perception. And when we go out of polarity already in this three-dimensional world, that means we are not judging and we are ending up in the oneness point, in the soul spark, and we are seeing the world for what it is, just a matrix of existence so that we can experience existence from different angles and in different fragments and in different little patterns along the way. So what else can I say about positive advice for the future? Well, live with love because your soul communicates through the heart. And when you feel something you can love, the butterfly sitting on a flower or a bird singing or the blue skies, just check on what you can love about your life. What is there to love? And that way, open your heart. 
And with this heart opening, whatever it is, might be just a smiling child's face, might be a big event where somebody asks you to be married or whatever it is, what opens your heart. But try to walk through life with an open heart and understand that even invading forces might have been victimized into playing soldiers in one way or another. And you with the power of your heart might have the possibility to transmute and transform aggression. I remember the story of one of my uh, guru lineages there that um, this guru was drafted into the army and found himself in the middle of a war. And what did he do? He sat down in the middle of a war zone and calmed the field down of aggression to be more humane. And he came out of that war and conflict without a scratch, but also disarmed it quite a bit. You might have been participating, or also you might have heard about the experiments where people were meditating to calm crime down in their communities. And lo and behold, the police were realizing less crimes, and there were studies done on this. The more people were praying or were meditating on behalf of calmness on behalf of higher awareness, on behalf of more lovingness and kindness, the crime rates went down. You might research it on the internet. I'm sure it's not all eliminated yet. I'm sure one can still find such uh, statements. How prayer and meditation could eliminate crime. I'm sure you will find it somewhere. And that's the positive thing to do. When you meditate for the well being of this planet, and when you meditate for the well being of Mother Earth, and when you tread lightly on Mother Earth, when you walk on her with your bare feet and you connect and you send her your love, it will do something. The same thing when you have a very open heart and you can embrace the world and say, this planet is beautiful. All the beings on it are beautiful. No matter what role they're playing right now, they are beautiful souls, and may they be reminded of them being beautiful souls, then the earth can uplift. And even in one-on-one -on -one dramas, when in families there is a lot of dramas or violence. Even in the darkness, darkness, there's always a light. And the light which shines is here in your third eye center. And through that light, you can always access source through meditation. There are many ways to meditate, whether it's a walking meditation or sitting in a lotus position and or just listening to beautiful music and drifting with positive intentional thoughts. All this is meditation. When you're looking at a beautiful flowering bush or a flower or looking at a butterfly and observing its beauty, even that is a form of nature meditation. So don't think you have to sit in meditation for hours and a day if you cannot do it and say, I don't do any meditation because I cannot sit that long, try to start it in a different way until you feel the compulsion to sit and be engulfed in this beauty of existence of divine light. There's the golden light meditation, but there are also meditations which bring you into this stream of space where you connect with the wisdom of existence that way, there are many different ways to go to the same goal.
but anything and everything is done through the third eye center in this third three-dimensional body because that's the gateway, the eye of Horus. The glandular system in our third eye center in the mid part of our brain. Well, I hope I gave you some ideas about positive advice for the future. One more thing maybe. What I really like to point out these days are the kin domains. That's a story created in Russia at the time, many years ago, the story of a lady, she belongs to the Reddit people in Russia. And they have a very close connection to the earth and earth spirit and spirit per se. And she, for example, talks about how you can grow your own medicine by putting the seeds you put into your mouth for a minute so that the seed knows already what your body needs and then you then so on, it will grow into a medicinal plant for your body. If you want to read more on that, it's called the Anesthesia Series of the Winging Cedars of Russia. It goes from, by Vladimir Megler, it goes from a story of his uh, meeting with Anastasia all the way to a more fictitious storyline of existence. And these stories has, have not yet happened in this way, but are in the process of happening. And as a result of this download of these books, more kin domains are now in existence and the wave swapped over from Europe also into America. Maybe check out kin domains. That are communities where people on two and a half acres each uh, build an estate and survive in a very natural, harmonious way. And I have to say, Anastasia is not a guru, she's just a being here on earth, which guides people to a natural, harmonious living with this planet. So when you look for positivity, you will find it in small things or big things. And if you want to link in with other people, I'm offering as of next year, 2022, a monthly meditation of like-minded people to heal the planet. Maybe I'll start already in December, not sure yet, depending on my prompting from the folk upstairs. But that's what one can do to find some like-minded people in your area and do a meditation circle. Put some nice music on, burn a candle, and then one of you leads the meditation of what comes to mind to go into a beautiful space and then do some healing work. Whatever comes to your mind, if the intent is positive, it will have a positive ripple effect. Okay, I leave you for now till we see you again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.